This Pokemon is boring, the moveset is uninteresting, and it's also overrated. Three of the things I hate most in competitive Pokemon, but I guess we have to make a guide, so this is how to use Blaziken in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Let's check out the ability, because that's what makes Pokemon so boring. It's going to hit the field, it's going to protect, it's going to grab the plus one speed, and now it's effectively a scarfed 80 speed Jolly Pokemon with 120 on the attack, but it can change its moves and it gets access to a different item. Life Orb on the 120 attack is pretty good, but what makes it better is the 120 stab, base power moves for both of its typings. Speaking of typings, let's see what it's weak to. A lot. Flying, ground, water, and psychic. Ground being pretty common, flying, it's going to be a thing. Water, well, you get bulked out on the Flare Blitz, and a neutral close combat from like a, just a fat defensive water Pokemon is not really going to threaten that water Pokemon too much. And Psychic, maybe a Psychic thing happens. Um, also, with the speed boost, it's going to be every turn, so it's going to be fast on that second turn. It might get the KO, and then it's just going to get faster and harder to catch from there. As for the other move option... I was going to say this is where things get interesting, because that's just how I talk about Pokemon, but there really isn't much interesting things here. Like, you look at the Earthquake and you go, ooh, Earthquake, that's just good on everything, and I really want to clap with the Blaziken. Well, to see what's going on with the Earthquake, it's time to visit our old friend, the Moves of Calculator, on Pokemon DB. You'll never hear the song again. So yeah, it's been a while since I've done this. That's mostly because it's got kind of gotten really weird as more generations and more Pokemon have been introduced. Like, Generation 8 was kind of slow to update, and then when there's like over a thousand Pokemon because of all the forms and stuff, and new typings and ability interactions, it, it just doesn't hit like it used to. It used to be like, oh man guys, we bring out that Fighting Ghost and we have perfect coverage. Oh, well, Fighting Ghost still has perfect coverage. Now, Hisuian Zoroark is going to screw that up, and isn't it that out of all of the theoretical type combinations, that's the only thing that would disrupt a Fighting Ghost from being perfect coverage? I don't remember, but there was also just some fun where you play around with, like, Electric Ice, you know, the whole Bolt Beam thing, because Magnezone, Shedinja, Rotom, then Newer on the Togetomaru and the Artisult, and you splash in some other things, like, yeah, Bolt Beam, just solid like that. Well, we can look at the Blaziken, and we can see Firefighting, Pretty solid, 66 on the not very effective, 515, 464. But when you add in ground, and I guess we can still kind of adapt this to Gen 4 by just cutting it off at Gen 4 Pokemon, but when you add in the ground, it doesn't get rid of your problems, like Gyarados and Dragonite. And I haven't really seen too much Mantine, but you don't get to cover anything into the Mantine. Pelipper, Rain Dance Team, Salamon. So adding in the Earthquake, even though it sounds cool and it adds a decent amount of super effective hits, like wow, 160 almost, that's crazy, it doesn't stop the strong Dragon Dance Pokemon from obliterating you. Uh, yeah, and it means that you don't really have an option against them because they're going to be resisting you, even if you are faster than them. So it means the game gets weird. Also, it's kind of why I haven't been using the uh, type coverage checker as much, because it's more about playing against the meta than having a move set for every Pokemon. But maybe now that we're in Gen 4, it kind of regresses back to, hey, you kind of want a coverage for everything. And then going back to the Blaziken move set, that's why the Pokemon is very uninteresting, because there's no crazy competitive decisions. And in Generation 4 Brilliant Diamond, Shine, and Pearl, it loses the Thunder Punch. So the Thunder Punch was kind of the something that it maybe had a little bit of, but uh, overall you don't have a super effective answer. Like there's no random dragon splash in move for the Blaziken, no electric either. Uh, Rock Slide, it's kind of it, Stone Miss. You put that in there and that does deal with all the Pokemon we just talked about, so that's a good thing to have. 20% chance you lose, but I guess it's better than having Earthquake and a 100% chance to lose. The Rock Slide damage, Especially after an Intimidate threat or something, doesn't really seem to be there. So, that's the Blaziken. I mean, even the colors are boring. We got brown, brown, red. Yeah, it's it's not, like, there's nothing interesting here. It, you just speed boost protect, click the best move. Now, Kentucky Fried Blaziken does come in a few different flavors, so we can talk about those. This is kind of a move set, but not really. It's mostly just the options that you can throw into another move set. Like, if you want to go with this offensive move set, if you go Focus Sash, Swords Dance, it kind of gives you that protect, where it's like, yeah, protect is just so I don't die and then I'm faster than everything. Here's where it looks like for that. You go Swords Dance, take a hit, potential Focus Sash, and then you have the plus two 
Close Combat and Stone Edge, which is going to offset. And then if you desperately need to use the Flare Blitz, that's going to work, but it will get you KO'd. Um, you can opt in for the Blaze Kick at that point, because like Swords Dance, that's just going to give us way more damage than the Life Orb, kind of putting us in the same realm of Blaze Kick damage better than just like straight recoiling yourself down and that is kind of like the weird thing that happens with the blaziken that it it might not get the 6-0 sweep just from chip damage necessary flare blitz recoil on the life orb set and then just like life orb damage so weird things can happen with the blaziken but it's also frail so it might not get a longevity or just hard sweeps everything uh that's why i mean like the right move set at the right time sometimes you have blaze kick you just get walled out and then you lose other times you have the Flare Blitz and then you get to KO 2 Pokemon before you go down to your own recoil, and then you lose. Some people like running bulk up on the Blaziken, but that kind of conflicts with a lot of the movesets unless you're going Baton Pass, because bulk up makes you tankier, but Focus Sash is there for when you're not tanky, so that kind of doesn't make sense. Also, bulk up, take a hit, and then use a plus one Life Orb attack. Well, it doesn't matter if you're tanky if the life orb is eventually going to take you down. So this is just kind of like a really reliable way of putting attack, defense, and speed into another Pokemon. And then you also just have close combat as an out and potentially something else. Maybe another coverage move. Maybe the substitute. Again, that makes less sense on the focus sash. And that's why I mean like the Poke Pokemon just starts getting like weird and messy for whatever kind of concoction you're trying to pull up with the uh, with the Blaziken. It's like, okay, you have a 120 attack Pokemon. It's got 80 base speed. It's got Jolly. It has crazy high base power moves. What are you going to do with it? Pass stats into another Pokemon. However, that is dangerous. Like, a Garchomp with plus two speed, plus one attack, plus one defense. I don't see how that thing dies. Except to, like, a Focus Sash Ice type Pokemon. But even if you sub and break your own Sash, there could also be some, like, really weird interactions to where you outspeed a Pokemon use bulk up it hits you but because of the bulk up you survive with like a third and that's a free sub and maybe they go for some setup or they switch or something and then if you can just baton pass any stats from blaziken plus a substitute you're just winning the game but also the protect it's going to be there for that safety also protect something focus sash something protect and now you're just passing off plus three speed into any pokemon at that point it becomes very difficult to catch up and that pokemon is also going to have bulk up or potential swords dance or by the way now we're just a plus two blaziken so the close combat KOs anything that isn't a ghost type pokemon all right and that's where we go into the speed tiers because you might be thinking well if we just have permanent speed boosting why are we running the jolly nature why not adamant why not just get our plus two outspeed everything on the 80 neutral speed and then win the game from there well that's because of a little pokemon called gyarados and also the weirdness of the 80 base speeds so here we have neutral 80 at 1.5 and that immediately puts us under 130 base speed pokemon so Jolteon can mess us up. We are a frail Pokemon. So a Specs Jolteon is going to outspeed the plus one Adamant uh, Blaziken. You're just going to find yourself in that position and you're going to be put into a losing position because of it. And that also means that 80 base speed Pokemon with a beneficial nature that are going for either Scar, for Dragon Dance, or some kind of plus, or if they end up with like an agility and now they have a plus two over you, they're just always going to be ahead and Blaziken does not have the luxury of ever being behind. So that's a thing that's going on, and then, yeah, the speed tiers and stuff start getting messy. Let's go and look at what Blaziken doesn't KO, because it KOs most things. So if we come in with that Clefable, unaware, so it doesn't matter if you have Sword Stance. If you go for Sword Stance, Clefable switches in. Um, this is what the numbers look like. So the Flare Blitz hurts. Clefable should not be getting two-hit KO'd. However, all it has to do is just predict the damage, and there's no threat from Blaziken setting up. So the idea is, eat the Flare Blitz immediately use Moonlight, and Blaziken takes one-third of its health from Recoil, and it doesn't get to do that too many more times. So, you can, like, really handle the Blaziken with purely defensive wall Pokemon. Here we have the Close Combat, which is the same damage as a Flare Blitz, onto a Hippowdon, and that's going to be a three-hit KO. So, Hippowdon has some weird things it can do, just straying out an Earthquake into a KO uninvested, because Blaziken is frail. Also, any, like, non-stab options from Blaziken, very underwhelming. Um, if, if we're just talking about Blaziken raw KOing a Pokemon, we can go and pull out, I don't know, something. 
Even though Sylvali isn't in the game, we were using it in other generations, just kind of be like, hey, a fat 90-90 uninvested Pokemon, if you can neutrally KO this thing, you're going to be in a good spot. Blaziken doesn't neutrally KO on the Flare Blitz, so we kind of just keep bringing this down until we see what it KOs. 80-80, Flare Blitz finds the KO, so roughly... If you watch my uh, Swampert guide, this is going to be the same damage as a Choice Band Swampert, but it's going to be faster, so it leaves less opportunity to be counterplayed, and that is a pretty fat range to KO Pokemon in. So, most sweepers, you have the speed over them because of the speed boost, you hit them neutrally with something, you're going to take a lot of recoil, or you're opening yourself up with a close combat. A minus one Blaziken does not want to eat an Aqua Jet. Hell, even extreme speed at that point starts getting dangerous. So it just kind of shows that Blaziken's role in Pokemon is Uranium. It's dangerous, but also unstable and subject to decay. And I know there's going to be someone in there It's like, well, Uranium isn't even the most dangerous radioactive element. That's just a min misconception. You really need to worry about whatever something. Fine. Blaziken's just radioactive, and it's, that makes it spooky. How, how about that? Um... Yeah, so a couple different things it can do. Maybe you have the right move set and you win. Maybe you have the wrong move set and you lose. Maybe you just get walled out. Maybe you pop off. Maybe you fall flat. That's what I mean. Like Blaziken isn't like this god unstoppable Pokemon. Once you actually get to a decent skill level of play, this thing doesn't run you over. But it's a complete pub stomper because no one just knows. Like, oh, speed boost. Oh, it's, it's strong now. And then, then it just gains a massive advantage or just takes the game all by itself. And things get pretty wacky from there. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.